going on y'all so i'm heading down here in the bottoms to meet some buddies of mine so i'm going to be hunting with chad smith and Corey jeffries uh with muddy river kennels and their black and tans uh good friends of mine so i'm starting this video series called local legends just coon hunting with local legends which is just friends and people i know around my area that want to get filmed and just you know go film some other dogs i'm always filming my dogs and i just like to film some other folks dogs and let's just go coon hunting and have a good time so i'm on my way to meet them right now We'll see y'all in the woods. Ready? Ready. Watch Got me in there too. So you found him, Chad? Yeah. Right there she is taking around, John. There. Yeah. Now, when she tree, I mean, when she when she barked, when she struck, of course she struck ahead of him, but she struck just a little deeper in there. Yeah. And then he just wheeled around. And he just he also treed. He's trying to. Right there she's coming. So Blackie's got treed back there. Chad's going to going to her. You got the bacon. Blackie split back here. So now we're going to Blackie. 
girl. Good girl. Good job, Black. Good job, girl. Good girl. Good job, girl. Good job. Drop two. You want to introduce yourself? Well, my name is Chad Smith. We're hunting here in the bottoms of West Tennessee. I'm Corey Jeffries. And y'all got black and tan, and mm -hmm. and your kennel name's Muddy River Kennels. Uh, how long uh, have you had Muddy River Kennels, or when did it get established? Actually, it started when I was in uh, I was going from high school to college, and uh, I had bought a mail from Walton Robinson, and he was out at Eagle's Ranger Black Hawks too. Robinson's Arkansas Queen. And I said, that's a can't miss crop. So I scrapped all summer. Uh, Dad let me scrap old equipment, steel that he had laying around. I made up enough money to, to go buy one of them pups. And that was probably the sorriest pup I ever had. Uh, it was terrible. But I called Lawton back. I said, this thing's not working. He said, uh, I just made a cross on Typhon with a grand night female, and uh, she's a nice kid. Let me give you one of these. So I said, okay, and uh, I went over with one of my very first girlfriends, and we picked Twister out. And uh, so I named him because, you know, John knows that I live right on the Mississippi River. so. I named him Muddy River Twister. That's yeah. kind of how it got started. That's how it got started. Yeah. He, he was a special animal. No, you know, he was top five, you know, as far as anything we've ever had. He was a nice one. And he was out of Lawton's typing dog. And uh, a grand night female that went back to Sydney. Do y'all still have anything in your kennel now that goes back to Twister? These two dogs running around go back to Twister's full system. Which and, was Queenie. And uh, Rip and Black here, are they litter mates? They are. Yep. yep. We hear one coming through now. On the hunt. That's Blackie. That's the closest you ever see. They all competition hunt quite a bit also, right? Yeah. Um, of course, Blackie's a grand knight. She's not well known as, as Rip. Rip's... Uh, the grand night as well. So about Blackie and Rip's mother, uh, reason we, so there's two dogs really that me and Corey kind of hang our hat on as far as getting started. One of them was named Belle. 
And her name's Mud River Bell. And Bell was out of uh, Shinker Smoking Jet and set them up Molly. Um, so this this old female that these pups are out of is named Josie. And Josie goes back to Bell's full sister on top and bottom. Her name is Jewel. Okay. And Jewel was the one that Dad had that was quiet mouth and bottles. And uh, so they go back to Twister on one side. And they go, well, Twister's sister and then Bell's sister on the other side. Uh, what's some of the hunts or some of the major events that y'all had success in? Just some of the, like Autumn Oaks, Winter Classic, any of those? Uh, Josie, and that's what we started. That's what started us was, well, actually, Wendell. Uh, uh, Inky Perry got us hired back up in the hunts because me and him really, I guess we was hunting that much lately. I mean, I mean we was locally, but Wendell come up says I want to go coon hunt with this this gift you got, and so I started on her, and I really worked her over. And her name's Muddy River Joseph, and so we made Josie a grand night pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Several Quina hunts, the black and tan sections, and then she was the national grand night champion at Autumn Oaks. Was that same year I got in the top 100 with her? Yep. Same as that year? Same year. Yep. All right. So the, the winter but preceding that, we were at the uh, black and tan appreciation hunt. The year COVID happened, we couldn't have black and tan days because Illinois didn't want us to convening there. So we had to, to back up and punt on COVID years. So we went to Indiana to Tell City to Herbie Landers and uh, Rex Robinson's club and we had a like an appreciation hunt. Mm -hmm. And I was talking I wasn't hunting that I wasn't hunting Josie. I was just there to put the thing on. And talking to Tyler Parks. Don't Corey wasn't there but I was there by myself. I had to go you I had to go and Tyler was telling me about this pup that went back to a doll named Big Boy. Hmm. What's the female he's got? He didn't even know. She's a grand knight. Well, he had bread in his grand knight. like Josie. Do you think her name was Josie? Well, yeah, I think so. I think so. Well, give me that boy's number. So we still had Blackie. But the story behind Blackie was she was a nice pup, and she started super early. But she didn't want to slow down the tree. The tree was too much work for her, or too much hassle. She wanted to run every track in the woods. So we were just basically waiting on Blackie to come come around. Yeah. And I gave Corey the number. What was that young man's name, Corey? You know? Joey. Joey. Uh, I can't remember his last name. I, I, I got it saved in the phone. But anyway, Joey, he's out of lived up there in Kentucky. I think he's Beaver Dam. You called him? I never talked to the boy. No, I called him, and uh, that was the pup that we give away as the stud feed. That's the one that Jeff Tomley kept as a stud, and we should have got our hands on him beforehand, but he right. went to another man, and and Tyler Parks, you know, the, the, the guy, they were hunting one night, Joey and Tyler, and hunting with some fella, and he said, hey, I got a black and tan pup I give you. And uh, so that's where... Uh, they give rip to him. Uh, Tyler Park said he didn't want him, so he had this friend with him that took him, and they didn't. I mean, I don't know. He didn't like him, so he didn't bark. You know, things about him. So I stayed on him. It took me four or five phone calls to get him, to get him bought, and uh, and we got him bought, and I ain't looked back since. He's he's been uh, he was a blessing. He kind of got me fired back up. I took a real big break when I was building the house. And, just uh, kind of a couple of years, two or three years to at least two. I didn't hardly, you know, I think we had Bo and Fever. And I done finished her out, him out. Had Fever. Yeah, had Fever. Eddie was hunting, had Fever. And then so uh, you'd bought that little female out of Texas out of smoking Jake. And I right. hunted her. Uh, didn't particularly like her. She wasn't what it was took to get me off the couch as much as I needed to. So, but Rip was. He was the, you know, 
first we got night. him bought yeah first night yeah first night i ever took him yeah he called me it's the same story i gave him with ice uh, she was a cull uh, she was out of the i me and Corey was at pkc black and tan days at adamson is that right remember mm -hmm. and uh, tom uh, jeff tomley was down there hunting maybe ice i'm not sure but he was telling us about this wild he female. Was hunting ice. He was hunting ice. He was telling us about this wild female out of ice. And uh, I was listening. The more he talked, the more I liked it. So, said Ron Cooper had her. So, similar. And her name was, uh, it wasn't Muddy River Ice, although that's who she was. But when we bought her, uh, 22 or 3 months old. I thought she was 18. Somewhere around she was somewhere in a year and a half, two year old. They, Michael Wilson already bred her before we got our hands on her, so she was called Wilson's Royal Black Eye. Couldn't change her name. Couldn't change her name. And they gave up on her. And I got her that first. It was after Saints. It was after Christmas actually. I called Corey late at night. I said, "Bud, I want to tell you something. We got something." I said, that, that rascal right there is the right kind. Maybe it was a change of addresses. I don't know. But we went to work, me and her did, and we we won all over the country. So, what, uh, How fast did you finish her? That was what? 22 days. 22 days from 19th to 19th. Yeah. So, like, major event-wise, automotive, winter classic, you know, any of those? She what? was high school in black and tan at Wasion. And a boneheaded call by me cost me the whole thing. She had like 2,500 points at Wasion, Black and Tan. She was high school in Black and Tan, but she wasn't in a hunt. She didn't have an extra class win that she needed. She gave that one away. Black and Tan days are like the world hunt for that's a, Black yeah. and Tan guys, that's for sure. That's right. so, so basically, from these pups, so Ice went back to Twister's full system. Through uh, Ike, so Ike's what? grandmother was Queenie, and Queenie's brother was Twister. So a lot of your the hounds in your kennels goes back to Ike, and then the Arkansas uh, or Robinson yeah, Lott blood, Lott Lott and stuff, and, and Mr. Bill's yeah, chicken yeah. stuff. So Be Bell, Bell come about. So I called Mr. Bill Shinker, introduced myself, and I was I, I was full wig. Looked up, I was 20, early 20s. And I told him, I said, if you get a good red pup, I'd love to have one. And it was months, months after that. He called me, Taylor called me. He said, I had a guy back out. And um, if you want one, you better come get it. So at my, at Cindy, my first wife, I, called, I told her when I got home, I said, been after this guy to get me a pup and he called us so that was a thursday night saturday morning we was at his house in oswego kansas and we picked up bell so bell is full shinker with a splash of ice uh ace and then these so these dogs that's what these are they're shinker on one side and there's probably rocks on the other and we just took that and we kept going back and forth now sometimes it didn't work yeah it ain't worked all it ain't worked all the time i mean we bred bell to ike and it didn't work it just didn't but when it works it really really works so. the ukc world last year uh y'all got pretty far in that right you did with rip we went, yeah, rip. We went to the uh, plata the plate uh how they call it kirksville no. kirksville missouri or is the plata no, no, it was uh, Hannibal. Okay. What is that? Club just outside of Hannibal. Uh huh. And Bull Corey put on him and Rip put on a freaking clinch. I mean, he really did, did a good job. How, how far did did y'all get with Rip? Well, he finished third overall at that uh, RQ uh, no zone zone semifinal. Uh, I think it was 126 dogs hunting a third. And uh, he just looked good. He did his job that was supposed to come back. We had the finals in Dyersburg. Uh, and I didn't want to be 
uh, convicted of uh, guiding myself and all that. So I, I got somebody to guide my spot because we were actually hosting the club, and uh, I got drawn with uh, uh, Jonathan Warrington. He took us over to 21 Island off on the Mississippi River, an island out on the river. And, uh, that's uh, that's where I wanted to get me in the, the top 20. I think it's what they call top 20. Top 20, but he he finished 15th overall. Uh, that's what he finished. And with it was he was the last black and tan in the Lepton. Or yep, he's the only black and tan made it to the top 20. That's and something to be really proud of. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and he got put of. out by the eventual fourth place winner, which was. When he went back out, he got put out by that. Uh, what was that kid's name? White Moaning? White, yes. Mm -hmm. hunting a dog called Buck Road Creek Hawk. Yep. Nice kid. Yep, nice dog, too. He did a good job. Tree the only coon we seen that night. As a matter of fact, Rip made a tree. Uh, to be honest, we was a circle tree. And I believe we tried to tree a coon that was sitting up a big old tree right beside it. Just missed it, but it was definitely a circle. And... That's before we could use thermal, so you really couldn't look the tree over with thermal. So, you know, it, I guess he could have had a coon there. I kind of felt like the way he petered around in there and circled around watching, because he, he, you know, he tried to tree the. I think he was trying to tree that coon up that tree and just. But it was a bad night, dry. Uh, two of them four dogs we drew that night never made a tree, and I remember looking that night and watching real. Seen him. He seen that bottom through. When I caught him after that two-hour hunt, he had done traveled for almost six miles yeah. trying to get him a coon tree. And the hawk dog, uh, uh, treed one pretty much right out of the truck. Uh, ended up treeing another one later on. Now, whether it was scored on or not, I can't really remember. It was right there at the end of the hunt. But didn't matter because he'd treed only he treed only coon we'd seen that night. So. Uh, just uh, we were, we was hunting at Gooch's, and there again, you know, I went back and took a blind draw. Yeah, took a blind draw, and and I and I think I hear him treeing back there right now. Yeah, I hear him. Yeah, snuck up on one. So before that, John, uh, Corey got him in December. Got him end of November. Yep, right around yeah. Thanksgiving area. And that next May, he come a uh, Indian herd from being high scoring black and tan at black and tan day, the right. high, uh, king of hunt. I'm talking about uh, her. And <laughs> Johnny was with him. You remember Johnny? Yeah, Johnny was there. Yeah. So, so Rip's been a Rip's a winner. Now Blackie and, is a winner in her own right. She was uh, got in that champions classic this past year and was fourth, a third third and it and then she was fifth overall at the winter classic she was high school in black and tan at the winter classic in black and tan she's won several queen of hunts so they're just uh they can pretty much compete with any color can. dog i mean yeah. we have our nights so uh, as, a, as a whole like i feel good turn them loose or whatever we turn them loose with and then rip and Corey just Got in the quarterfinals of PKC World, so two years in a row. I'm thinking he's high scoring black tan in one registry one year and another registry another year. I'm pretty sure of that. Made it to the quarterfinals of PKC World, World, this PKC year. World, World Hunt this year. And honestly, he he I, he ain't been acting right. And this is really the first night we've got him out. I've been knowing since September that it just wasn't something right. A lot of people couldn't tell. Uh, he never acted like nothing was wrong with him. Never acted sick, but he just—he was missing that edge and that. I don't know. He just ain't. Of course, he went through a bad bout of Lyme disease last year and had to. Had to. That didn't know. Ended up having to carry him down to Mississippi State to get him. Figured out what was going on with him. Got him back over that. Seemed like he was back to himself last winter. Uh, after that was over with, and uh, we think he got a tick on him from up there in northern Missouri, up there close to that Iowa line that probably had the Lyme. We don't, we're not supposed to have it around here. So we chalked it up to that's where he got it from. And it hit, it hit about Thanksgiving. About this time last year, I was spending time at 
carrying him back and forth to Starkville. Well, we uh, actually took him. Or him and Blackie, well, they had a UKC hunt, and we didn't participate. So we were going to go pleasure hunting afterwards about this last week of last year. Mm -hmm. And we cut them both loose, and they both took out. And then he got about 10 feet, his front legs bowled up, and he just started pushing himself like a dozer. So we put him up, and that's how Corey went to Mississippi State with him. So he, uh, he, yeah, he, he, uh, but I just found out his thyroid is dropped. Like all these other dogs, you read about his thyroid, his thyroid. I took him, I don't, uh, two weeks ago today and, uh, said, look, let's just check it. So I was talking to another coon hunter and it just never dawned on me to check it. He said, you ought to have that checked. And, uh, so I had that checked and sure enough, it's low. So he's been on supplements every 12 hours since then. Uh, and, the night before last, uh, I didn't shut his pen door good, and 20 minutes later, he was 800 yards across over there by the house trees, so I decided I'd go just get my collar and get him and take him hunting, and he ended up looking really good that night, uh, and this is the second night he's been out since he got started on his supplement, so he seems to be maybe doing good get, for get, having get, a tough break. That's right, getting back to where he, where he was. But what well, people don't know, you know, just around here, you know, around our area right here, there's not really many people hunting black and tans besides you two, me, myself, you know. Um, I know there's a few other guys, but just don't well, see I a hunted, lot of them. Yeah, I hunted whatever till I I got to hunting bell. He went with me when we were, so he told me several times in high school, he said, why don't you go hunting? Why don't we, take, why don't we go hunting? Why don't we go hunting? Well, they say once you go black, you never go back. Well, he, That's right. He, <laughs> he saw me in town or something. I'd got, I'd already been married. So why don't you go? Why don't we go hunting? I said, I tell you what, let's go, whatever night. And I had that's when Bell was four year old. She was finished. Nice chip. Boy, he just loved it. After about a week or two of hunting together, I told him, I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. What's that? I said, I'm gonna give you half of that dog. Yours. No money. The only deal is that you buy one, I'm half, and I buy one, you're half. So we're half forever. And that's just the way we've yeah, been the whole time. Yeah. Uh, he bought real. I bought Josie. We raised Blackie. Uh, I think I bought that. I mean, we we just back and forth. I bought ice. I mean, we're which we're partners. So right. It's worked out real good for us. So. They're, these two animals are as good as he's been treating her for a minute. And I hear Blackie come in. And I hear her trying to say, why don't we uh, go get the scooter and get a little closer? I like a plan. Right. So we're going to Blackie Street now.
see him over there, Corey? We got rip treat in here about 200 yards, and Blackie's back in there, six tents working the track. So we're going to rip now. Rip has a coon. You can see the coon there in the split. He's in the den there. Right there. That's up to y'all. How much footage you got? Quite a bit. Got some good footage.
later it gets, the further they're going to travel. Yeah. Had a good hunt tonight, tree some coons. Yep. And seen the one coon in that last den. Had a good hunt. Johnny, I'd like to say that I've I've met a lot of good people with these dogs. And and you're one of them. Well, I appreciate that. Enjoy your I enjoy your friendship. Yep. It's always been a pleasure. Yep. With you to go on with you and talk to you. Yep. Like one of us. I guess Muddy River Lolo was one of us, wasn't she? Oh, yeah. yeah. That old Muddy River Rider. Right. He's, uh, he's made a lot of good friends. And really, after the 40. 25 years of study of breeding these things, these are probably the culmination of all that, you know? Yeah. All that work and stuff. We sure blessed, that's for sure. And we got some in the, in the bullpen. Got a, got a little female out of rip that I've been liking for years. She has a good bite to her. I can just keep her healed up long enough to yeah, and then he's bred him uh, to a grand night female. He's got two of them. They're younger. Man, and they've got mouths. They've got big mouths. So we're hoping we got some future coon triers coming up. Yeah. And then Joseph's got some year and a half old ones that we just, they're all wild. Them three are wild and run anything and they can track. So we got to break them at, at some point between now and black and tan days. Probably next year we're going to breed old Blackie to something. So we got a couple of ideas. So she's out of the. Uh, can't get too super close, but we do have some one more breeding of that. Think about using that breeding of that thing. Yeah. We're just seeing what happens. Maybe she'll have a, a litter. Well, we definitely had a good hunt tonight with. Black and Rip, yep. and Muddy only River two, Kennels. Only two out of boy and Joseph's living, and both of them are grand night. Enjoyed it, Johnny. Thank you for for doing it. Thanks, John. We'll do it again. Okay.